Let's open our Bibles to the book of Joshua this morning. The book of Joshua in chapter number 2. <clears throat> As you may be familiar, Joshua chapter number 2 has to do with the story of a lady named Rahab. And that's what we'll be preaching on this morning, Rahab in rehab. <laughs> Amen. Joshua chapter number 2, verse number 1, the Bible says, And Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came into an harlot's house named Rahab and lodged there. And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in hither tonight of the children of Israel to search out the country. And the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, which are entered into thine house, for they be come to search out all the country. And the woman took the men and hid them, and said thus, There came men unto me, but I wist not whence they were. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we're grateful this morning for your word. Lord, for the opportunity once again to bear the good news of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that it will fall upon the ears of ears that are ready to hear. God, if there be one this morning that does not know you as their personal Lord and Savior, that today would be the day of their salvation. Lord, there's nothing that causes heaven to rejoice greater than a soul passing from death to life. I pray, God, that if there's one, that today would be that day. Father, we give you all the glory for what we're about to hear. And Lord, may you have full control, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Sometimes it's what the passage doesn't say that is of most interest. And I don't know how many times in your scripture reading you allow yourself to pause and consider these things, but here we have a, what I feel a very peculiar story of this lady named Rahab living in Jericho, and Joshua sends two spies. He said, I want you to go check out the land. Namely, I want you to go over there to Jericho and bring us a report back. And this woman who is of no doubt ill repute, amen, the Bible says she was an harlot, uh, these men come to her house for lodging, and as they come there for lodging, she receives word from the king that says, I want these two men, and she, a harlot, a woman living in Jericho of ill repute, takes those men and hides them. Why would she do a thing like that? How had she heard about what was about to take place? May we consider this morning for just a little while this woman named Rahab and how she got rehabbed and got a changed life. Amen. We'll look at that here this morning. You might ask, you know, why did these two spies go to a harlot's house? Well, uh, I suppose that two men traveling on their own wouldn't raise much suspicion going to a harlot's house. Amen. Amen. But it's obvious the scripture says that they went there for lodging. Amen. As they went there for lodging, uh, we find this woman who's named Rahab. And I want you to notice, first of all, this morning, Rahab's condition. Amen. Number one, she was a dirty woman. And we call sin a lot of things these days, but namely, we don't often call sin what it actually is. Sin is dirty. She was a dirty woman. Fornication still sin. Harlotry and whoredoms is still sin. It's still not right, even though it's commonplace in the world today. People call it common law marriages, no marriage at all. Amen? She was a dirty, dirty sinner. And all of us, our sin is dirty before God. <clears throat> that name Rahab, you'd be interested to know, actually means insolent, prideful, fierce. That's what her name means. It may be indicative of the kind of character she was, an insolent, prideful, feisty woman. That seems to fit the bill of a harlot of those days. <coughs> it's also interesting when you study Scripture to find out that Rahab is used, the, the name Rahab is used to refer to what in Scripture is commonly known as the most wicked nation on earth, the land of Egypt. In uh, Psalms chapter 87 and verse 4, when talking about Egypt, 
David said, I will make mention of Rahab and Babylon to them that know me. Behold, Philistia and Tyre with Ethiopia. This man was born there. He's talking about the land of Egypt. Psalms 89 verse 10. Thou hast broken Rahab in pieces as one that is slain. In Psalm 51 9, or Isaiah 51 9, the prophet said, Awake, awake, put on strength, O arm of the Lord. Awake as in the ancient days and the generations of old. Art thou not it that hath cut Rahab and wounded the dragon? She didn't, this name does not have a good connotation in Scripture, amen? And neither does the name of a lost sinner. Amen? amen? It's dirty. Sin is dirty. The Bible says all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. You know, we get way too comfortable with sin. Amen. The Bible says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And in Galatians chapter 5, Paul draws the contrast between the works of the flesh and the works of the Spirit. Amen. And those works of the flesh are dirty and sinful. And they separate us from God. Amen. And in our lost condition, that's exactly how we are. If you're here this morning, you don't know Christ as your Savior, you wonder, how does God see me? Does He see the good works that I do? He doesn't. He sees you as dirty. The Bible says all our righteousness are as filthy rags in God's eyes. You may be a do-gooder. You may give the charities. You may uh, you know, be involved in neighborhood watch. Amen. But in God's eyes, without Christ, you are lost, undone, and dirty. And that's Rahab. She was dirty, amen? She was not only dirty, she was at this point deluded. Amen. While Rahab met, must have been successful in business, you say, why do you suppose she was? She had her own house. It was not commonplace for a woman of those days to have their own house. It was always referred to as the man. But she evidently was uh, good enough at her business and made enough money to have a house of her own, amen? In, and in spite of the fact that she was successful in her sinful, dirty living, she was dead to God. Mm -hmm. yep. <coughs> she was dead in trespasses and sins. Listen, folks, you have to really ask yourself if success is measured by how well you prosper in this life. Right. What do we get? 70, 80 years? <coughs> Amen. We don't get a lot of time in this life, but eternity is a long time. I would not sacrifice eternal value on temporal goods. Amen. But at this point, lost and undone, she was deluded in her mind. Amen. As long as she could keep a roof over her head, as long as she could keep the customers coming, as long as she had food to put on the table, she was successful. She was renowned in Jericho. Amen. She thought she was doing okay. And you may think this morning that you're doing just fine in your sin and that because you've got money or you've prospered or you're independent or you've got the world and you know everything, you might think everything's fine. Let me tell you it's not. She was deluded. The Bible says in Mark chapter 8 and verse 36, For what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? There's a lot of times people look at Christians and say, I don't want to be one of those Christians there. They don't have anything. And when they do get something, then they, they've got to give it away. And they're not allowed this and they're not allowed that. This world's deluded, friend. <laughs> I don't count my blessings by how much I got in the bank. I don't count my blessings by how new my vehicle might be or how fancy my home might be. I count my blessings by knowing in whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. I count my blessings that by God's grace I've been able to pass that down to my children and they sit here in church with me this morning. That's a blessing. Amen. Don't be deluded. You may profit with your dirty old sin, but that's not success. That's not success. She was deluded. I'll tell you what else she was. She was doomed. She was living in Jericho. You do know what happened to Jericho. <laughs> she may have thought she had it all together, but guess what? Judgment day was coming. The Bible says, as it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment.
the judgment. Friend, there is a judgment day coming. You never get away with sin for too long. Amen? You know, you see this in every realm. of even in, the, even in the world, justice seems to have a way of catching up with you. After eight years of the liberal government, justice seems to be finally catching up. Amen? You can't get away with this stuff forever. You can try and hide it under layers of bureaucracy, under layers of documents, but after a while, it has a way of finding you out. But before you feel too self-righteous, the Bible says of ourselves, be sure your sin will find you out. Amen. Friend, we, listen, we, we get so concentrated on everybody else's situation, everybody else's circumstance, that we forget that we ourselves will have an appointment at the judgment seat of God one day. Doom was coming for Rahab. Amen. Jericho was going to fall. It was inevitable. She was going to die. They were going to die. Jericho was going to fall. You know, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 11 and verse 9, Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart, and in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou, that for all these things, God will bring thee into judgment. He says, you go ahead. You fill your heart with whatever you want to. You fill your eyes with whatever you want to. But do not forget that at the end of this life, there's a judgment waiting. Right Saved or lost, judgment day is coming. Right. Amen? Judgment day is coming. Friend, Rahab was in a mess. Amen? She was in her dirty old sin. Amen? She was deluded into thinking her financial bliss was, uh, you know, success and security. Amen? She was dirty, she was deluded, and she was damned. And that's the state of every person without Christ. That's right. We forget that sometimes. We see all the glitz, all the glamour, the, the prosperity in the, these 70 years that God gives us in this life. But we forget about eternity. We forget about the never dying soul. That's right. Amen? Right. That was Rahab's condition. But I, I'm glad the story doesn't end there. You say, man, you're putting Rahab in a real bad light. You're never going to see the light until you put yourself in a bad light. You've got to see yourself how you are. Amen? There's not one person in here that does not fit the bill of sinner. There's just two kinds of sinners. And you're one or the other. You're either a lost, dirty, deluded, damned sinner. Or you're a born again, blood bought, child of God sinner. Amen. Amen. And the cross is the dividing line. Amen. There's a scarlet cord that runs clear from Calvary. Amen. That you've got to wash yourself in. Praise God. If you're going to go from the lost dirty, deluded, and damned to the blood-bought child of God. There's only two kinds of sinners, but make no mistake, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. I know that you know these verses, but will you look with me in Romans chapter 3? It's good to be reminded. Listen, friend, salvation, salvation is not good works. Amen. Listen, help me out this morning. I know you know this story. I know that you have, you know, the majority of you have trusted Christ as your Savior. But on the chance there's one in here tonight, this morning, that has never trusted Christ, could you say amen when something's right? Amen. amen. Let them know that you believe the Bible. Might encourage them also to believe God's Word. We're all sinners. Without Christ, we are dirty, deluded, and damned. Amen. 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 Romans chapter number 3. Romans, Listen, folks. If you're saved and you become unimpressed with this story, you need to find your way to an old-fashioned altar. Yes, sir. Yes. Amen. You need to go back and remember when you were lost and without God and without hope in this world, no peace to your soul. And you need to remember the moment you went under that crimson flood and got under the blood and it got on you and you got born again. You need to remember that this morning. You need to remember that this morning. 
Amen. Romans chapter 3 describes us in our lost condition. In verse 11, the Bible says, There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. You say, well, I'm looking for Him. No, you're not. You're looking for self-satisfaction, maybe. But I'm telling you, it's not a sinner coming to God. It's God coming to a sinner. Amen? Amen. The Bible says they're all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. Yeah. No, not one. Amen. I look at the ungodly of this world, and you know what I see? Unprofitable. Unprofitable. No satisfaction, no peace, <coughs> unprofitable. The Bible says their throat is an open sepulcher. What comes out of their mouth is death. It's death. I get reminded of that every time we try and sit down and watch a hockey game and a commercial comes on. Everything that comes out of the lost mouth is death. It amazes. Folks, it, we're, so, we're so dull to it. I was amazed last night. I was thinking about, you know, it is illegal for a professional hockey player to bet on hockey, and yet the entire hockey game is filled with commercials of hockey players advertising gambling. You say, what is, you know what gambling is? Man, I, I, can't, I can't help but to think of the little old lady at the counter who gets her little check and spends half of it on, you know, scratch tickets. It's death. Yeah, yeah. It's right. death. Everything that comes out of the mouth of the world is death. Right. Amen. It, it brings no good. It, with their tongues, they have used deceit. Say amen right there. Amen. And you were that way before Christ. Amen. You had to portray yourself as some good thing. There's none good, the Bible says. Deceitful. Amen. The poison of asps is under their lips. Death and dying, whose mouth is full of cursing. Oh my. Oh my. Man, I, I tell you, cursing, a feeble mind trying to express itself forcefully. We go over there in Middleton sometimes on Tuesday night, the Conrad boys, and we'll go over there. And those guys, they, all they know is four letter words. That's it. Every sentence is, is punctuated. With a four-letter word. Amen. They, they have, there's no sense. These are young men. My age. I'm still young. <laughs> Early 40s. Amen. Yeah. That all they talk about is how much dope they've smoked, how much booze they've drunk, and how many times they can use for it. You say, what are you doing there? Well, how are you going to be a light holed up in your house all the time? <laughs> you know, they know there's something different about us. Yeah. Amen. We've had opportunity to witness to those guys before. Amen. You say, oh, well, you do it the way you want to. And we'll see how it all pans out. Amen. Amen. But it's dirty, dark, death everywhere. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. It's a miserable life. Amen. I remember thinking about my, Leanne and I last summer walking down through town. You know, after they legalized marijuana, you know, and everybody would have their windows, all the apartments up above the businesses on Queen Street. You walk down through there and it smells like a skunk. Yeah. And I'm thinking, how many couples, how many young men, young ladies, old men, because old men and old ladies smoke the junk too, are sitting there doping their lives away. Yeah. Drinking their lives away. Partying their lives away. Great time they had and don't remember a bit of it. Misery. Miserable. Dirty. Doomed. Damned. Lost. It's a miserable condition not to have hope. Not to have the peace of God that passes all understanding. Not to have the knowledge that your sins are forgiven and that you're guaranteed heaven as your home. What a miserable existence. Amen? Destruction and misery. The way of peace have they not known. Oh, amen. You know the maddest people in the world are those ones out there with their agendas. Amen. I mean, that was evident last summer. We had the, the little million march for the kids. You know, there's about 75, 80 people that got out there and just 
held a sign or two and calmly walked down the street. Well, guess what was waiting down at Jubilee Park? 250 crazy, angry people screaming and hollering. They started chasing us up the road. Who's angry? Who has no peace? Amen. Amen. Who is missing it? Amen. We all just got back to the parking lot, kind of smiled at each other, said, have a good day. Let's take off before they get here. And you know it's pretty bad when the police have to come warn the peaceful demonstrators, that's us, that these angry people are coming up the road. It'd be better if you dispersed. That's like a Jew trying to walk to a synagogue in downtown Toronto and having to encounter a hundred angry Palestinians. Amen. Hello. Yeah. Amen. And then, and then them beating the Jews and the police coming to the rescue of the Palestinians because it's a peaceful protest till the Jews showed up. <laughs> Hello. I'm telling you, you say, what is that? Dirty. Yeah. Dirty. Deluded. Yeah. Lost. Damned. Messed up. Yeah. No peace. Amen. Just destruction and misery. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Boy, that describes the world today. Amen. That was the world Rahab lived in. And I wonder this morning, is it the world you're living in? Amen. You can't, you can't, you can't have both ways. You can't have the world plus Jesus. Jesus doesn't add himself to anything. He is all in all. Or he is nothing. But you can't add him to your life. You've got to be born Again. Amen. And that's what we find when we look in Joshua chapter 2. We find some things. Not only Rahab's condition, but praise God. Secondly, I'd like to draw your attention to her confession. Amen. She's got a good confession here. You know, what I realized is that by the time these spies visited Jericho, she had already met with the Lord. Amen. There's no other way she could have known what she says here. Look what she says with me. Verse number 9. And she said unto the men, I know that the Lord hath given you the land. Who told her? Well, it must have been the Lord. And I'm telling you, when you get born again, it's not a preacher, it's not a church, it's not a religion, it's a meeting with the Lord. Somewhere she met with the Lord. Amen. And she said, The Lord hath given you the land, and that your terror is fallen upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt, and what you did unto the kings of the Amorites that were on the other side of Jordan, Sihon and Og, whom ye utterly destroyed. Turns out Rahab knows a lot. You know what the saddest thing about it is today, folks? We're not doing our job telling the lost about Christ. There are people that live in our own communities who have never heard the message of the gospel. Well, that's illustrated in the children's ministry that we've had in King's Cadets. You know, when we first started that, kids had heard of the Bible stories. Now, they never, never mind that they don't know David and Goliath, they don't know Jesus. They've never heard of Jesus. They don't know that God sent His Son who died on the cross to forgive them their sins. But you notice a couple things she says here in her confession. You notice in verse 10 she says, For we have heard. How'd they hear? There, there Rahab is in a far off city over there in Jericho, a wicked city. She's a whore. Amen. She's a dirty woman. But she heard a story. She heard something. Right. How will they hear without a preacher? Right. You know, sometimes the lost are great preachers. Yep. Man, I'll tell you what. I, I heard about what God did over there. Man, you put them through the Red Sea and He did a... Man, I've seen what's going on over at that amazing Grace Baptist Church. I heard so-and-so, they got them some religion, James. And they're, man, they're all crazy about religion now. That's how the lost preaches. But it's very effective. Somewhere she heard. Who have you told? She heard something about God. Amen. We, we have a great story to tell, friend. Amen. She heard some things about the Lord. And I tell you, we got to go into those overlooks. we got to go into those homeless encampments. we got to go to where they are. Amen. Right. Amen. Yeah, sure, Jesus went to the synagogues 
and preach to the religious crowd, but he ate with the publicans and sinners. Say why? Tell him about himself. He didn't have fellowship with them, but he sure did preach to them. Amen. She'd heard something. You know what else that tells me about her? Not only had she heard something, but she had been inquiring. She knew some details. Amen. And boy, I'll tell you what, isn't it a blessing when you get an inquiring soul seeking out? Listen, I figure if you're here this morning, you're inquiring after something. What did you come here for to see? Amen. I want to put up right there by the clock. I want to put on that wall right there. Sirs, we would see Jesus. Just as a reminder that every time you stand in this pulpit, it's not about some demonstration of a man, but it's a demonstration of the spirit and of power. Why? There's inquiring souls. You don't know what child is sitting here this morning that your bathroom trip distracts. You don't know what senior person is trying to listen while we clamor around. And do. Listen, there are inquiring souls that have come to the house of the Lord to hear something from God. Right. Amen. She had an inquiring spirit. Amen. Hey, tell me about that. Do you have the time to tell a lost person about the Lord? Amen. Her confession is that she heard. Friend, how will they hear without a preacher? Right. Who will go for us? Who will tell them? Man, I, I love precious stories about people who go. I remember Miss Maureen, a friend of hers was dying in the Annapolis hospital that she'd never had a chance to tell. And she armed herself with those little legless soldiers, those gospel tracts, amen. And she drove down there and she read that thing to her friend before she passed. Amen. You know what that, that lady will never say? She never heard. Because right. someone told her. Amen. How much do you love the lost? Amen. How, how, how are you doing emptying the track rack out there we haven't had to refill in a long time? Amen. She heard. She heard. And listen, friend, if you're inquiring after the Lord this morning, the Bible says, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. You know, today he still can be found. Amen. He can be found at an altar. He can be found in the place of prayer. He can be found by one desperate heart crying out to Him in a moment of need. I'm telling you, He can be found. He is an ever-present help in time of trouble. And Rahab, bless God, was in trouble. She was in big trouble. But she heard. She heard. Amen. You know something else in verse number 9? The Bible says, says there, it says, and she said unto the men, I know. Friend, not only had she heard something good, she knew something. She knew something. There, there were some things she knew about the Lord. Amen? Listen, we're not going to alter the plans of the Lord. He, he is unchanging. He changes not. We are not going to change God's mind on things. But I'm telling you what, there were some things that she knew about the Lord. She knew the Lord had given that land to those Israelites. And I'm telling you, there's some things you ought to know about God. Amen? Right. His hand is not shortened that it cannot save. Right. You are not too far gone. People say, Listen, if, if, I, if I walked into that church, it'd probably burn down. Oh, shut up. Right. You know, do you understand how many wretched, dirty, deluded, damned souls have walked into a church building and found Jesus at the altar? Amen. Amen. Worse than you, friend. Amen. 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 There's not a sin He can't cleanse. Amen. There's not a soul He can't save. Amen. There's not a one He doesn't love. There's not a one He won't rescue and pull out of the burning. But you got to know something. He loves you. And He sent His Son to die to save you on Calvary. And I'm telling you, He loved Rahab enough to send a messenger into the land so she could hear the good news. Amen. Amen. There are some things she knew about the Lord. What do you know about Him? I'll tell you what I know. I've been knowing the Lord since I was just a young child. And by the way, salvation is not something you grow into. It is not a... a, a period or process it is a moment in time Amen. Amen. And, and I don't care if you think I'm out of my mind but I'm telling you there was a moment in time Amen. when I was five years old my grandfather preached on hell that Sunday night and I knew of a surety I did not want to go there 
And because my parents read the Bible to me and prayed with me and took me to Sunday school and had me in church every time the doors were open, it was on my mind. And when I went to bed that night, I could not go to sleep. And I was waiting on my dad to come for bedtime prayers. When dad came up the stairs, I remember I had the blankets pulled up. And I said, Dad, I don't want to go to hell. And dad said, well, son, you don't have to go to hell. Jesus died to save you. Amen. He said, you know these. And I got out of the bed, down by that bed on that bedside, and trusted Jesus Christ at Redhead Road in St. John. Listen, I could take you to the place it happened. And I got saved at five years old. And I'll tell you, there's some things I know about the Lord. I know He's faithful. Amen. Amen. I know He's merciful. I know He's gracious. I know He loves to save whosoever will may come. And listen, that day is Rahab, or whatever God, whenever, however, whatever the occasion was where God met with Rahab, it didn't matter that she was a harlot. It didn't matter that she was dirty. Amen. There was something she knew. There was forgiveness in the Lord. There was safety in the Lord. There was redemption in the Lord. Amen. She found it that day. Have you? Have you ever had that moment in time? Or you've trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior? Amen. It's not a process, friend. You remember the day when the Lord saved you. Man, I've had the blessing of hearing the testimony of some people. I've been, we've had the blessing of being witness Amen. to some of the, the folks here that have trusted Christ as their Savior. Do you have a story like that? Do you have a time like that? Rahab did. How? She heard some things. Then she knew some things. Amen. And I want to tell you, thirdly uh, here, uh, she believed Amen. some things. You say, well, how, how do you know about what she believed? Look with me over in the book of Hebrews. And while you're turning there, you notice something in verse 9. She said unto the men, I know that the Lord... How does she know the Lord? Wouldn't he have been, I have heard that the, the God of Israel. I have heard that your God. Oh, no, no, friend. Yeah. She said, I have heard that the Lord. I'm telling you, somewhere along the line, she met him. Right, she must have met And I'm telling you, friend, somewhere along the line, you got to meet him. Right, right. you got to get to know him. you got to make a personal acquaintance yeah. of him. She didn't question who it was. She didn't think he was some mystical power. She didn't think he was just some idol made of stone. She knew that the Lord was the deliverer. She knew exactly who he was. And I'll tell you what else. Not, uh, not only those things, but she believed. Look at Hebrews 11.31. By faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with them that what? Believe not. Why? Because she believed. You say, what she believed? She believed that God, the Lord God of heaven, could rescue her. That could save her from impending doom. And my friend, Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by Him. There is impending doom. And your only salvation is in Him. The Bible says, neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name given under heaven whereby you must be saved. There's only one name that is highly exalted above every other name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow. And friend, I'd rather battle him here and now of my own free will than battle him by force on the day of judgment. She bowed. Amen. She, but she didn't perish with those that believe not. Why? She believed. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Amen. What a blessing. This dirty, deluded, doomed sinner made a confession. Amen. The Bible says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Amen. 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 She believed. She believed by right. faith. And I want you to notice thirdly and lastly, I want you to see the change. Oh, you know, a lot of this salvation stuff these days, I have a hard job believing it. Why? Amen. No change. No change. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, 
He is a new creature. Right. Now, listen. Old things, the old creature stuff, passed away. Behold. You know what behold means? Look and see. Behold all things are become, not becoming, Amen. they are become new. Yeah. Amen. There is victory Amen. in the saved life. Yeah, right. Amen. Things are not becoming new. Your sanctification is not a process. You know what people want Jesus? They want to add Jesus to their life. Oh yeah, I want to add a little religion. I'm going to add a little church. I'm going to add a little Bible. Oh no, no, friends. See, right. when you get saved, you Amen. die, and He comes alive. Yes. If your life was a pie, your pie's in the trash. Amen. And now you're living His pie. Right. It's not all of you plus a little of Jesus. It's not a, a lot of Jesus plus a little of you. It's all Jesus. It's a new creature. You are born again. It's not anything of you. The old habits, you can kick them. I said the old habits, you can kick them. Why? It's his pie now. The old thoughts, you can get rid of them. Why? It's a new life now. It's not becoming new. It's not in hopes of making things new. All things are, present tense, become new. That's why Paul could say so emphatically, I can do, present, I can do all things through Christ. Amen. Which strengthened it. She has a changed life. You say, how do you know? What do you see about a change? Well, there's a, a proven change in her labors. It's interesting to note, and I won't be emphatic about this, but it's interesting to know what she hid the spies in on the rooftop. I never knew a whore that saved flax. But she had flax on the rooftop. Maybe she was changing her occupation. Maybe her occupation was changed. Maybe her labors were changed. Where she'd been helping the devil before, now she was helping the Lord. She was hiding the spies from Israel. Things changed in her life. She went from a successful business lady of a doomed and damned city, Jericho, to helping out the Lord God of heaven. She changed what she did. Amen. Right. Amen. And I'm telling you, when you get saved, there is a vast difference between the works of the flesh and the fruit of the Spirit. Right. Galatians chapter 5. We have time enough. Let's look over there for a minute, shall we? Galatians chapter 5. You know, you ask yourself, am, I don't know, am I saved? I don't know, are you? Let's measure. Let's see. And by the way, I'm just going to hammer this again because it helps some people literally out and maybe it will help you out this morning. Once you get saved, you can't undo it. You can't lose it. You can't spend it. Amen. You can't forget about it. It's in you, it's there, and it's never going away. So if you decide you want to get saved, you better determine you want to live for God or you'll be the most miserable person in existence. You can't lose your salvation, friend. Amen. Why? Because if you could, it wouldn't be eternal and God would be a liar. You say, don't tell me that somebody could make a profession when they were a kid and, and then live their whole life and all this debauchery and wicked lifestyle and then go to heaven when they die. No, don't you tell me something. You're not a fruit inspector. Right. Every one of us will not stand before you on Judgment Day. We'll, you say, well, are they saved? I don't know if you're saved. The only way I can suppose that you are is by seeing how you live. Changed life. Right. You know, if you're a harlot before you get saved and you, I, I had a religious experience, and you keep being a harlot, I'm doubting your salvation. Yeah. Legitimately. Yeah. But I'm not judging your salvation because right. I'm not the judge. Amen. But you can't come to this church and profess to be saved and keep harloting. It's going to change your life. Yep. Amen? You can't continue to do those things. Yep. 
Amen. Galatians chapter 5, verse number 19. The Bible describes the works of the flesh. Do these describe your life in all honesty? I can't see in your soul, but I'm telling you, God can. Nobody in here can see in your heart, but God can. The works of the flesh are manifest in verse 19. Adultery. You got a heart full of adultery? Fornication. Uncleanness. Lasciviousness. Idolatry. Amen. Where are you every service when you're not here? What are you worshiping? What are you worshiping instead of you know, reading your Bible and having a daily devotional life with the Lord? Are you an idolater? Are you saved? Or you got these works of the flesh? Amen. Witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, I mean, murders, drunkenness, envies, all of these things. And then he says in verse 22, but these are the fruit of the Spirit. If you're saved, you will bear these fruit. Love. Amen. What do you have? Love or strife? And emulation. Putting yourself up by putting others down. Amen. Do you have joy or are you just a reveler? You find momentary pleasure in momentary things that are very temporal. Or do you have a lasting joy? Do you find peace only when you're home on the couch watching your favorite show with your favorite pop in your hand? Or do you have a continual peace that abides and never leaves even when you're struck with a sickness? Or even when a loved one passes? Or even when terrible things and tragedy strikes in our lives, do you still have that enduring peace that passes all understanding Amen. that is able to keep you sane Amen. in a crazy world? Amen. Amen. Do you have long-suffering? Amen. Amen. Are you able to endure an extended period of trial? Or do you crumble under the pressure? Right. Amen. Are you patient? Do you have a goodness about you? You say, well, I thought you said none was good. Wait a minute. <coughs> she got born again. <laughs> yeah. And now she has a goodness within her. You say, what is it? It's Jesus Christ. Yeah. Right. There's still nothing good about me. I know that in my flesh dwells no good thing. But in my soul dwelleth the Holy Spirit of God, sealed there till the day of redemption. There is something good inside of me. It's just not me. <laughs> Say, well, I really like you. Well, thank you very much. But what you really like is Jesus in me. Because without Jesus, I'm a miserable cuss. Oh, I would be. I'd be a nasty person without Jesus. Why? I'd be serving the same God every other lost person does. Myself. And I will run over you to do it. Amen. Without Jesus. Amen. If all I'm living for is this life, I don't want to live it poor. I'll run over you to make myself rich. Amen. I don't want to live it without the momentary pleasures of this world. So I will spend everything and even you to give myself those momentary pleasures. But that's not who I am. Amen. Amen. See, Rahab's not the only one that went to rehab. So did I. Amen. And everything changed. Amen. Amen. By God's grace, I don't serve myself. I don't serve sin. I don't serve Satan. I serve the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Why? Because He so graciously served me. Amen. She had a changed life. What about you? Has your life changed? Amen. She had a proven new love. She had new love. She went from loving her customers to loving the God of Israel. <laughs> These spies, she loved them enough to hide them. Amen. She became active in trying to put others under her umbrella of safety. You know, if she gets promised back there in Joshua chapter 2, she gets a promise. Right. Amen. She gets a promise. The, the, the promise is this. I believe it's down in verse number 18. The men said this to her, Behold, when we come into the land, thou shalt bind this line of scarlet thread in the window, which thou dost let us down by. It could have been any other color, by the way. Amen. Yeah. Thou shalt bring thy father and thy mother and thy brethren and all thy father's household home unto thee. And it shall be that whosoever shall go out of the doors of thy house into the street, his blood shall be upon his head, and we will be guiltless. And whosoever shall be with thee in the house, his blood shall be on our head, if any hand be upon him. You know what was changed? Not only her labors, but her love for others. 
Do you know what? She had just received the message of hope that whoever was inside her house when they came, they'd be spared. Man, don't you suppose she ran around? She could have had kids all over the place. She was a harlot after all. <laughs> and she probably ran from door to door saying, Come home! Come home! Judgment's coming! Come to the house! Whoever gets in the house, they're going to be safe! Because I got a cord! I got a scarlet cord! And if they see the blood, I will pass over you! Amen. And, and, she, and she got her father and her mother and her brothers and her sister. She told everybody, get in the house. Get in the house. And I'll hang the cord out the window. Amen. When that death angel comes, he'll pass us by if the blood's been applied. Amen. That's a different Rahab. Amen. The Rahab before, oh, she wanted him in her house. <laughs> She wanted them in the house for what she could get out of them. She wanted to suck them dry. Suck them dry of their money. Suck them dry of their conscience and their purity. Oh, she was different now. Man. Amen. She wasn't concerned about herself. She was concerned about others. That's a different lady. Amen. That's a changed lady, I'll tell you. Amen. Not only that, it was also proven by her new life. Would you turn with me to Matthew chapter 1? Old Rahab had some new realities. Amen. In Joshua 6, verse 25, while you're turning over to Matthew, the Bible says, when they came into Jericho and the walls fell flat, Joshua saved Rahab the harlot alive and her father's household and all that she had. <laughs> Woo! Everything she had, man. Everything she would brought in that house. Who all was it? I don't know. But I'll bet you it was standing room only. Right. Amen. I'll bet you she had them packed in there as tight as they would come. Amen. Amen. And Joshua saved her and her father's household and all that she had, and she dwelleth in Israel even unto this day. Amen. Because she hid the messengers. Right. Amen. She was spared. That's right. Amen. Folks, there is a refuge. That's right. I said, there is a refuge. Amen. Amen. There is a place of safety. Say, well, as long as I'm part of this church. Huh. Well, as long as you're the pastor. Huh. Well, as long as we... No. It's Him. It's Him. He is our refuge. He is our high tackle. He is our salvation. Amen. She had a new reality. She had tried through her trade to bring herself security, to bring herself some, some confidence. But now her security came from someone else. You know who it came from? Hosea. Salvation. Wait. Jehoshua, the Lord of salvation. Remember that? The changing of the name? He was born Oshea, which meant salvation. Moses changed his name to Jehoshua, which means the Lord of salvation. There is a Lord of salvation, friend. Do you know him? Do you know him? She knew him. <laughs> she said, I have heard that the Lord. I believe I knew that the Lord. Is your hope in him? I tell you something else in Matthew chapter 1, verse 5. Not only did she have a new reality in that respect, she had some new relatives. <laughs> in Matthew chapter 1, verse 5, the Bible says, And Salmon begat Boaz of Rahab. You say, Who's Rahab? Why, of course, it's the Greek for Rahab. Wait a minute. This is the genealogies of Jesus. Yeah. Oh yeah. 
there's a former harlot in the genealogy of Jesus. But what a change. What a change. Listen, lost people sit there with no hope. Woe is me. I'm telling you, God can change your life. Amen. Amen. The only person looking down on you this morning is yourself. We were all there one time. The only person being self-critical is you. And maybe this morning it's your conscience screaming at you, I need a change. I need to be made new. There's no rehab program in this world that can fix you. I don't think Brother Jerry will mind. Jerry, earlier in his life, was an alcoholic. And Jerry got dry from alcohol going through AA. But if Jerry had died having gone through AA, being dry of alcohol, without Jesus, he still would have died and went to hell. It wasn't until Jerry Pueblo met Jesus Christ. Amen. You know what AA teaches you? They teach you once you're an alcoholic, you're always an alcoholic. Yes. I'm going to tell you why that is. They just don't know Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Amen. When you meet Jesus, you become a new creature. Right. Praise God for programs that can help people with addictions and help people with these different things. But there's nobody in this world that can help you with your sin yeah. except Jesus. Yeah. With AA, you're always, with RU, with all, you're always in recovery. You're never a victor. But in Jesus, you pass from death to life. Amen. Woo! Praise God. Amen. Amen. What I was, I'm not that anymore. Amen. Where I was, I'm not there anymore. Amen. Amen. Not because of me, but by the grace yeah. of an almighty God who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I'm not what I was. I'm born again. Right. You may remember the old me, but I'm telling you, I'm a new me. Right. And I bet you she spread that word through town. She went from a harlot to a heaven bound believer. Amen. And, right. and she found herself all the way into the genealogy of the Lord Jesus. <laughs> who would ever thunk it? Oh, yeah, Rahab. <laughs> she probably got 150 kids. Oh, she, her, her, no telling how many grandkids she Who knows? Crazy. She probably got kids running around everywhere. Something changed. She's found in the genealogy of the Lord Jesus Christ. She got some new relatives. Right. Amen. When you get saved, you get a new family. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's right. You get a new family. Hey, we're not much. But we'd like to be yours if you'd have us. <laughs> Amen. You get a new family. You get new brothers, new sisters. She got everything new. Amen. When you get born again, the Bible says you become joint heirs with Christ. Amen. You receive the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Amen. Amen. You know what else she got with that? She got a new reputation. Amen. You know, the thing is, if you think, if your first thought of Rahab is, oh, that old harlot, you haven't read your Bible enough. When I think about Rahab, this is what I think. I think the great, 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 earthly grandmother of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You say, Preacher, you got saved when you were five. You have no clue where I've been. I don't need to. I've read my Bible. I've seen the Lord rescue harlots, demoniacs with legions of devils. Amen. I saw, I've seen in this book a centurion who put Christ on the cross, stand at the foot of it and say, surely this man is the Son of God. Amen. I've read about a religious leader a leader of the leaders of the Pharisees named Nicodemus who came to Jesus by night and was told, ye must be born again. And when they took the Savior's body off the cross, there he was, yeah. a believer. Yeah. I don't need to know where you have been, but 
but I'd like to know where you're going. Amen. If all you think you've got is this life, friend, let me tell you, there's a life beyond this. Amen. Where are you going? Where is your soul's eternity? You say, oh, I've just always been a Christian. Oh, no, you haven't. If that's your mentality this morning, I hate to tell you, but you're lost, dying, doomed, damned on your way to hell. You need a meeting with Jesus at the foot of the cross. You know what's that one, so wonderful about Calvary? The ground is all level at the foot of the cross. doesn't matter where you've been. We all have to crawl up the same hill to the foot of Calvary. And when you get there, it's all level. Amen. There's no big sinners, little sinners. Amen. But there's always a sinner with a choice. Receive, accept, believe, or reject and turn. What's your choice? You want to be known as the Rahab the harlot or the Rahab the great grandmother of Jesus? You want to be known for what you've done or what he's done? That's your choice this morning. You want to leave here lost and going to hell or do you want to leave here this morning born again, saved by the blood, Heaven bound. That's your choice this morning. Let's stand together. I want to